Kruger. Dauntless Warrior. Bear folk who have weathered countless battles are not uncommon among the Maulers. You, however, are as free-spirited and easy-going as Kruger. In his clan, a warrior's combat record directly corresponds to their level of authority, yet he has never really cared much for this custom. For him, a clash of weapons is the truest test of power. As a result, his exploits tend to give rise to fantastic and even humorous tales wherever he goes. Kruger is not one to drag out battles, and will often employ the simplest and most direct methods to quickly defeat his opponents. During the Great War between the Maulers and the Lightbearer Empire, colorful stories of the One-Eyed Axe Bear and the Mauler King and Pride of the Bear Folk appeared all over the land, each more unbelievable than the last. Kruger, however, was largely unaware that the main character in all of these stories was none other than himself. Possibly the most widely circulated story was in regards to the one-eyed axe bear. Uh, you want a tango? Gotta sharpen my axe. <laughs> Rumors say that Kruger's massive stone axe is not particularly sharp, and that its destructiveness stems from its incredible weight. No opponent had ever survived a direct blow from this colossal axe, which earned him the title of Axe Bear. The one-eyed part of the title was earned much later in the Great War against the Lightbearer Empire. During a particularly fearsome battle, Kruger spied a human general before him and swung at him with every ounce of his strength. The general, a man by the name of Hogan, saw through Kruger's brusque attack and deflected it simply by adjusting the angle of his shield. Kruger was stunned at how easily his attack was foiled, so much so that he failed to react to Hogan's counterattack, costing him his left eye. To Hogan's surprise, however, Kruger did not fly into a raging frenzy like most Maulers. Rather, he spoke in a calm and almost elated manner. Not bad, but now it's my turn, right? Hogan could not help but smile at the cheery demeanor of his bear folk adversary. The next moment, he tossed aside his shield and charged at Kruger. His blade held tightly in both hands. The two warriors fought for what seemed like hours, yet no clear winner was ever decided. Thus was the legend of the one-eyed axe bear born. But just as the sun sets over the scorched expanse, so too must it set on the halcyon days of even the mightiest heroes. Led by Bromwood, a group of Lightbearer Empire deserters appeared in Mahler lands and came across Kruger's expedition. Just as a fight was brewing, Bromwood recognized the one-eyed axe bear. Immediately, he laid down his arms and begged for mercy. <laughs> swearing that he would not harm any innocent maulers. Kruger, still in high spirits after his battle with Hogan, decided to let Bromwood and his soldiers go. What Kruger failed to realize, however, is that not all humans are as noble as Hogan. The people he had just let go were no more than a pack of oath-breaking villains whose intentions were pure violence. Soon enough, word reached Kruger of a village being massacred and plundered by human hands. Bloodfang Village. It was but a small and remote settlement, but when Kruger finally arrived, it had already been reduced to bloody ruins. The young and able-bodied Maulers had gone to war, leaving only children and elderly behind. Unable to resist such easy prey, Bromwood and his men ransacked the village before retreating into the Lightbearer Empire's domain. However, 
Bromwood underestimated the maulers of Bloodfang Village, who were far from willing to die at his hands. Gathering whatever weapons they could, they stood together and fought back against their marauders. Though he ultimately emerged victorious, Bromwood's hubris cost him more than half of his men. There was no doubt that the elderly and the infirm of Bloodfang Village had given up their lives in defense of their home. Kruger, whose heart was full of both pain and admiration, began to bury his fellow maulers with his own two hands. By this time, Bromwood and his band of deserters had already fled across the Lightbearer Empire's borders. For a long time after that, Kruger's name was seldom mentioned. So, what happened to him? Was the question most asked when his name arose in conversation. None could say for sure whether or not the legend still lived. But one thing was certain. Kruger had long since left the Maulers. After casting off the battle regalia of his people, he donned a light hood and infiltrated the Lightbearer Empire alone. He did so with only one goal in mind, to make Bromwood and his cowardly underlings pay for their sins in blood. But this was no simple task. As a Mauler, he was far from welcome within the borders of the Lightbearer Empire. Wherever he went, villagers would glare at him and draw their blades. Even the children would brazenly throw rocks at him from the roadside, infuriating Kruger to no end. After a year of searching, Kruger finally caught wind of Bromwood in the town of Ryham. Apparently, he and his men were colluding with the local lord to mercilessly oppress his subjects. Sounds like Bromwood. Not wanting to surrender the element of surprise, Kruger chose to hide in a nearby grove and wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. It's payback time, those filthy bastards. 